Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies again, back with another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a Death Corpse of Krieg infantryman in the 143rd Artillery Regiment, or Siege Regiment. Um, this is a project that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I spent a lot of last year painting up a massive army of that, and now with uh, Games Workshop dropping the new plastic Krieg infantry unit, I thought it would be an absolutely perfect time to show you guys how I achieved my paint scheme. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, let me know what you think at the end. Thanks guys. Okay guys, first thing we're gonna use is these six colors. It's Fenrisian Gray, Wildwood, Skeleton Horde, Basilicanum Gray, Lead Belcher, and Seraphim Sepia. This is the miniature that I've chosen. It is the new Sergeant from the new Plastic Creed kit. Um, absolutely stunning middle. It was a joy to put together. And the first part of the miniature we're gonna be working on is his great coat. That is what we're going to be using the Space Wolves Grey for. So we're going to take this and we're going to apply it to all of his great coat. So just take your time, go around every single part, make sure you go between his legs and get the, uh, the inside of his jacket and stuff like that as well. We're trying to get good all over coverage. Try not to miss any bits around his uh, lapel or anything like that. It looks quite opaque here, but we, when we get to the layering stage, it will make a lot more sense. A little bit more. Be careful not to hit his leg. And there we have it. The first coat of blue is done on his great coat. I really like the uh, color scheme of the 143rd Artillery Regiment, so I'm really excited to see how this turns out. The next paint that we're going to use is Wildwood. We're going to be using this for all of his boots, his, his trousers, all the little straps, his uh, little pack on his chest there, and uh, part of his backpack. So we're going to be super careful with this one because that uh, brown will go over that blue quite easily, uh, which will make a mess, and it will be hard to recover from that later. So as you can see, a lot of contrast on the brush, letting it do its thing. Jump around now to his straps and his uh, chest rig. Taking your time again. Wow, was such an amazing color to uh, base coat any browns with. There you have it. That's what all the straps and stuff will look like on him when it's all base coated brown. It already pulls the model apart. Starts to separate all the different bits and pieces. I really love that. The next thing we're going to do is move over to Skeleton Horde. Skeleton Horde is going to be used for all of the like bandage straps that go around his like shin guards, uh, his gloves, the fabric part of his uh, gas mask. They're all going to be used with skeleton horde as well as a sleeping roll on his back. So this is a really quick and easy step. You can see how quickly it gets a desired color on the model. There you have it. There's all the bits blocked out with the skeleton horde. Takes absolutely no time at all. We are going to move over now to Basilicanum Grey. We're going to use this to block out the colors of his weapons. Just do the casings. In fact, do the entire weapon in this color. Um, we'll go back over in a second with the metallics to, uh, to break up the bits that need to be metallics, like the chain teeth and stuff like that. But for now, just get a nice, even coat all over the weapons. And there you have it. Got his helmet as well and his shoulder pads. Next, we're going to move on to that lead belcher color. We're going to use the lead belcher, like I said, to pick out all the trim on his weapons. Uh, the chain teeth, which we're going to do here. Things like his belt buckle, um, the air tube that comes from the bottom of his mask down into his uh, chest rig. I paint that in silver as well. His helmet and his shoulder pads. you got to take your time here. Each individual tooth is a, is a pain, but it's well worth it for the final result. There we have it. The model's all blocked out with silver. With that, that is all the base coats pretty much on this model. We are now going to give it an all over wash of Seraphim Sepia, my favorite shade. We don't need to be careful with this at all. We're going to use a medium shade brush, load it up a lot, and then give the model an all over coat. 
This will pull all of the colors and tones together, give it that kind of dirty grime look, which is really what Krieg are all about. These guys have been fighting in the trenches for, for weeks, months, and years at a time. Their equipment isn't in the best of conditions. And I love what Shade does to a miniature. Needs to move on to the layering section in a minute. It just becomes so easy. And there we have it. That's what the model looks like with a shade over the entire thing. You can see it's picked out all the details. Now, if you're in a rush or you don't enjoy the painting process, you're just trying to get models finished, you could leave the miniature like that. Absolutely no problem. If you want to take it a step further, here we go. I'm going to start with the fang. We're going to use that to layer up his great coat. It may seem like a, a stark jump going from uh, that base coat to this layer color, but uh, just bear with me in a second. You'll see what it looks like over the entire model. This is the bit where you actually have to take your time. This is probably the, the slowest part of painting the miniature is getting the, the blue done on the gray coat, making sure you don't block in all of the, the recessed shading and stuff you've already done in the model. But if you take your time and you're careful, the results are well worth it. As you can see, I'm not being particularly picky about where my highlights go. Just a, a roundabout, they kind of should go here. You'd be surprised how good that looks across a unit and an army. Remember, we're not trying to go for competition painting level here. We're just trying to get our miniatures painted on the table. Just getting the last few bits around the back of his gray coat here. We have that right arm to do. And then we're laughing. Like I said, this is the most complicated stage and the slowest. Everything else you can fly through. And it's absolutely legitimate to batch paint the miniatures. Okay, and there you have it. That is the blue jacket all layered up. I think that looks pretty good. Really starting to make the miniature pop. Next we're gonna do is pull that brown wildwood color up a little bit. To do that, we're gonna move over to Mornfang Brown. It's a great color for layering. I know it's a base paint, but it works a treat because it's quite bright and rich. So let's do it. Load our brush up. We're gonna start with the uh, leg of his trousers. And we're not trying to get into all the nooks and crannies like before. It's only really where light hits that we're trying to add a little bit of the brighter color to. So to me, that, that leg will be done now. We'll be going under there trying to get every little bit. Moving over to his belt, buckle, and his harness. You don't need to go crazy. Just nice kind of stippled mall effect across his uh, leather, across his backpack. Making sure you leave the gap between all those packs nice and dark. Really makes it stand out. Makes it look like you put loads of effort in, even if you didn't. Next thing we're gonna do is move over to the bandages. Sandry dust will be my color of choice to layer these up. This is super quick. Like I said, it's only where the light touches, so it's only about the shin area. Won't be going around behind his legs or anything like that. Just a few quick highlights. We'll also do his bedroll, uh, the little canister on the bottom of his backpack, his mask and his gloves. Again, lead the uh, the shading all done in those recesses. Don't be painting over everything. And then his glove. Tips of fingers. The back of his hand is about all you have to do. Make a huge difference. Like I've said in previous videos, when a person picks up a miniature, they look at things like the weapons. So they're the kind of things where you want to spend a little bit of extra time. And there we have it. Next thing is Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to use this to uh, layer up the casings of the weapons. So as you can see, I started on the bolt pistol. Not going crazy. Like I said, not trying to fill in all the detail. Just adding a little spot color. 
really going to make the difference. I'm a sucker for Mechanica standard grey casings on weapons. I think it looks great. I really like to look at that bolt pistol, so I'm just going to spend that little bit of extra time. Can you imagine a, a Krieg officer standing up from behind a trench system and barking off a couple of rounds from a bolt pistol? Now we move over to the casing of the chainsword. Just like before, just all the top flat panels. Don't worry about getting it everywhere. And there we have it. There's the weapon casings layered. Onto lead belcher, and we're going to use this to pull the silvers back up a little bit. Starting with that bolt pistol again. Just a few dabs here and there, just to pull the color a bit brighter again. Quick and effective. So if you're doing an army of these guys, you might have a hundred of these guys to paint. You don't have time to be edge highlighting or line highlighting these models. There we have it, silver is all layered up. Nearly finished now. Simple bit of Mephiston red. Just gonna block out the eyes with this color. No crazy glow effects, no glazes, no nothing. Just a flat coat of Mephiston red. You can go crazy on the characters and stuff, but this guy just quick and easy. So that is the model about 95% done. Next thing I'm gonna do is throw them on a base. For my Krieg, I did very simple Sterling Battlemire for the basic infantry. So this is what it looks like. I applied a coat about an hour ago. It has had time to dry. And then I just do a quick two-stage dry brush to really make it pop. Rise of Rust is the first color, which I know you may seem crazy, but give it a chance. Bright orange. I use the back of my hand to remove the uh, excess paint. I just feel like I can control it better. Quick dry brush, that's what you're left with. Which I think looks pretty good. Now my secret weapon for adding a little bit extra detail to the miniature. Put the base down, take the orange, and I give the model a light dry brush. This is an environment these soldiers have been crawling through and fighting through for like a long time. So if you think they're not gonna have stained uniforms, uh, same color as the bases, you'd be crazy. I think it adds a really nice little touch of them dirt and grime to the model. Next, you shop the bone. Same thing again, light dry brush all over the model. Model over the base. Just to pull it back to a more neutral tone. And then once again, hit the model with that bone dry brush. Look at the difference that made on the backpack. You'd swear I spent hours painting it. Now you guys thinking I'm crazy dry brushing this much of the model. But uh, reserve your opinions for the end. Let me know what you think. Of course, the Abaddon black, which we're going to use to rim the base black again, make it nice and neat and tidy. I'm of the bizarre opinion that only black should be used to rim bases, but what more can I say? I'm really pleased with uh, the result that I'm showing you guys at the end. Cannot wait to paint the rest of this squad. And there we have it, guys. As you can see, I once again leaned quite heavily on contrast paints to get my base coats on. We threw on that all over watch. We tied it all together. And then after that, we just used a quick layering system and... I think the results speak for themselves. We have a stunning miniature that is very easy to mass produce, gets quite a ton of these guys done in an evening or two, and then before you know it, you'll have a whole army done. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you enjoyed it enough and think you want to watch some more of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. Um, this is only my second video, but I hope to release a lot more over the coming weeks, helping you guys to uh, get your models from grey plastic to a nice tabletop standard, quick and easy. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. The plan is simple. We paint them all.